The producers of Quantum Leap needed a handheld computer for Al to communicate with the project and to control the imaging chamber door. We don't have a timetable on when or how it was made, but we can guess that there was a mad scramble to create some kind of prop in time to film the pilot and then continue to work on it so that when the show was picked up three weeks later, Al would have a blinking, squealing, futuristic computer to hold in his hand. In the pilot episode Genesis, the handlink is a single piece of 8th inch acrylic with blocky graphics. It only appears for a few moments in the scene where Al is explaining Project Quantum Leap to Sam while he's out fishing near a river. We have no contemporary photographs of this version of the prop, but repeated viewing of the high definition Blu-ray suggests that it became the faceplate for what would become the first calculator handling. In Quantum Leap's third episode, The Right Hand of God, the finished calculator handlink makes its introduction. It is made of amber acrylic and has white and orange graphics on the front, three rows of lights that chase each other, and a small illuminated LCD text display that was frankly too small to read even on the Blu-ray. This calculator handlink would appear in every subsequent episode of the first season, plus six episodes in the second season, including What Price Gloria and A Portrait for Troyan, which were actually filmed for season one but held back for broadcast until season two. In total, this calculator would appear in 12 episodes. Starting with the fifth episode of season two, Blind Faith, a totally new calculator handlink would appear. It had a large six character text display in bright green at the top, 27 LED light bars, and extensive silkscreen graphics on the front and back. The LED lights had several different patterns, which could be selected by the production crew depending on the dramatic tone of the scene. The text display had 10 different messages built in, but they were rarely shown on the screen. Often the last few characters of one of these messages would be shown. Some of the messages had a built-in pause designed for actor Dean Stockwell to mime interacting with the handling. However, this feature was never used. This version of the calculator, now the third version of the handlink, appeared in 17 episodes of season two and six episodes of season three. In the episode So Help Me God, both versions of the calculator handlink appear in the scene where Sam and Al are speaking in the judge's chambers. Perhaps the batteries were low on the new calculator and they used the old one just to finish the scene. This second calculator and third version of the handlink would see its dramatic demise in the episode The Great Spontini. The calculator failed to provide Al with the necessary information to answer a deposition in family court with Al repeatedly striking it until it conked out. The next time we see a hand link in the episode, it is a new one made of multicolored blocks. This wouldn't be the last appearance of this calculator though. It made one final appearance, all the way in season five, in Lee Harvey Oswald part two. Gushy is carrying it down a hallway at Project Quantum Leap, a little over halfway through the episode, or three quarters of the way through if you are watching as a single two hour episode. Quantum Leap's Halloween episode, the name of which many fans still refuse to speak aloud, introduced the series fourth hand link design. With bright colorful blocks of acrylic, it was a radical departure from the previous calculator type designs. For plot reasons, if you've watched the episode you'll know, the lights did not blink and no sounds were heard from the multicolored prop until towards the end of the episode. With the calculators now retired, it was now time to fully introduce the new version. Unlike the calculators, it had no discernible screen or readout other than 100 LEDs on the front and back. This led many fans to question how Al even reads the device. Perhaps it had a holographic display that the audience couldn't see. Season four of Quantum Leap would open with our first serious peek at the future in The Leap Back. This fan favorite episode showed off Ziggy and the wrist link, both following the same design as the multicolored blinking handlink. The Leap Back also lent these handlinks their popular name. Presumably there were fears about filming a television show with a one of a kind irreplaceable prop. So a second gummy bear handlink was created by the prop team. The two handlinks are possible to tell apart due to an extra LED on the front and a few changes in the acrylic blocks. Most notably, the configuration of the metal rivets on the front are quite different. 
Now with two hand links in the mix, we can't be certain exactly how many episodes each of the two gummy bears appeared in, as they were often used interchangeably, perhaps due to battery life or some LEDs not working. The first gummy bear could have appeared in as many as 62 episodes. The second gummy bear may have appeared in as many as 44 episodes. For the leap back, there were two wrist link props made. One for Dr. Sam Beckett, and one for Donna Elise Beckett. The original props consisted of a clear swatch watch band, colored acrylic blocks, and an electronics box that the actor would carry in one of their pockets. Wires would be concealed running up the actor's arm. One of these original wrist link props was sold at auction, and they were nice enough to post a short video of it in operation. There were some variations on the hand link, but they weren't totally new props, just embellishments or accessories. In the episode Another Mother, Al shows a series of holographic dinosaurs to the youngest daughter, played by series co-creator Deborah Pratt's daughter, Troy Ann Belisario. In Last Dance Before an Execution, Al needed to scan the church to find a bullet. A beam of light comes out of the top of the hand link, and special effects of streaks of light are added but a close analysis of the high-definition image reveals that Dean is actually holding a small flashlight under the handlink. In the fourth season episode, Play Ball, apparently the filming handlink had been damaged and so opaque yellow and orange acrylic were hastily installed. These two blocks continued to cause problems as they are entirely absent from the prop now owned by Deborah Pratt. With a sequel-booted Quantum Leap series launching, the creators of the new show wanted to pay homage to the iconic Gummy Bear Handlink, but there was a problem. These props are now 30 years old and are owned by the family of Dean Stockwell and Quantum Leap co-creator Deborah Pratt. They are fragile and might not survive the rigors of filming a new show. But there is another Gummy Bear Handlink not generally known to fans. I'm talking about the stand-in Handlink. I didn't know this existed until Martin Giro, showrunner of the new Quantum Leap series, posted a 12 second clip of it on Instagram. This hand link was never designed to be seen on screen, as it has a rougher appearance and only five blinking lights. It also has more of a pastel appearance, as the choice of acrylic colors was lighter. During season two, another prop company, who would later work on Star Trek, Apollo 13, and From the Earth to the Moon, developed a prototype that would be an evolutionary successor to the previous calculator designs. Its most distinctive improvement was a text display that could be programmed on location with a laptop. However, as often happens in Hollywood, the producers of the show went another direction. You can read more about the history of this alternate hand link through a link I'll put in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this walk through memory lane of all the hand links that made up the series Quantum Leap. If you'd like to own a piece of history, Replica Props and I have developed screen accurate replicas of both the gummy bear hand links with all their colored blocks, lights, sounds, and touchpads exactly as they appeared on the show. We are also deep into development on a replica of the second calculator hand link with the aid of the collector who currently owns the screen used prop. And we're also close to releasing a wrist link replica as well. Thanks for watching.